hi welcome to my second channel and i hope you are well in this video i like to talk to you about your adi part 2 test adi part 2 test is all about your driving ability how you are driving you will drive for an hour and in that hour you will be tested on how you are driving and is your driving up to the standard for you to become a driving instructor now because you've been driving for a while you have picked up many bad habits these are the habits you need to get rid of before you go to your ADI part two. Now I get many come to me to give them an assessment lesson to see how they drive, what the problems are, and do they have any bad habits which they need to get rid of. And the list I'm going to go through in this video are the most bad habits drivers have. Because they've been driving for a while, like I said, these are the habits they have which they need to get rid of. So I made a list of the bad habits which most pick up over the years and these are the things I have covered in this video for you to see look at the list and what you do is you go out and you practice and you improve those get rid of those bad habits improve them so that you become better driver you go to your ADI part 2 you pass and then when you become an ADI when you become a driving instructor you teach your learners how they should be driving let's start the lesson Now, because you've been driving for a while, the problem you're going to face is the bad habits. You have picked up many bad habits because you've been driving and now you have the list of bad habits which you need to get rid of before you go to your test. So number one is the blind spot. Over the years, you've been driving for a while and you're not looking at the blind spot. So every time you pull up on the left, before you move off, make sure your right blind spot is checked. Before you change lane, whether it's right or left, whichever way you're changing lane, make sure you check the blind spot of that side. So before you move off, right blind spot. If you are parked on the right hand side, left blind spot. Before you change lane, whichever way you're changing lane, make sure you check the blind spot of that side. Many, like I said, they don't check the blind spot and also make sure you know why you need to look at the blind spot what is blind spot where is the blind spot make sure you find out make sure you know that way you know where to look because you know where the blind spot is and number two if you know why then you know the danger you know the risk behind and you will never forget to check the blind spot so number one is the blind spot number two is checking mirrors are you checking mirrors You've been driving for a while. Do you just check the mirror whenever you want or are you checking the mirrors at the right time? Remember, just checking is not enough. Are you checking at the right time? So before changing gear, before slowing down, before giving gas, before changing lane, every five to eight seconds, are you looking at the mirrors? So any change of speed, are you looking at the mirror? And if you are driving on a long road without any problem, are you checking every five to eight seconds? So next time you drive, check are you doing that or are you just randomly checking but you're not actually doing at the right time. So for example, you're driving along and you could see a traffic light and it's red. What do you think you should be doing? It's red. You need to stop maybe over there. And because of that, you need to make sure to check who's behind because you might have to brake over there. The car in front, they're braking. What do you think you should be doing? Maybe you'll have to brake. Look at the mirror first and then start braking. You want to go left, you want to go right, you want to change gear, you want to increase your speed, you want to brake. Are you checking the mirrors before all those? So any change of speed, next time you drive, make sure you check, are you checking the mirrors? So that's number two. Number three is coasting. This is one of the common problems for many. Because you've been driving for a while, you're just coasting. Number one, do you know what coasting is? Coasting is where you put the clutch down too early and you're just driving, putting the clutch down, and you're just driving. Should you be driving by putting the clutch down and just drive? Many times it happens, so say you, there's a traffic light coming up, and it's red, and you know you're going to stop over there. What you are doing is you're putting the clutch down and just driving near to the traffic light, and then you're braking. Should you be doing that? That is known as coasting. So make sure you understand what coasting is, and make sure you don't put the clutch down too early, because that's what the problem is. So make sure you understand what coasting is and get rid of that problem if you have that problem. Number four is 
driving with one hand. They either drive with one hand or they steer with one hand. Okay, so if they want to go left or right, they just steer with one hand. Should you be doing that? This is one of the bad habits you pick up because you've been driving for a while. So try not to drive with one hand, both hands on the wheel, because you get maximum control if you have both hands. And also try not to steer with one hand. You should be steering with pull and push technique with both hands. You have maximum control if you have both hands on the wheel. So because you've been driving for a while, like I said, this is one of the bad habits you're going to have. Maybe you're just driving with one hand or you're steering with one hand to go left and right. So that's number four. Make sure if you have that problem, get rid of that problem. You don't want that. Because that's why you're going to be teaching your learners. Imagine you have that problem, but you are teaching your learners not to do that. Don't preach while you don't practice. Practice first and then preach your learners. Okay, eventually you're going to become a driving instructor, which means you're going to teach your learners. You're going to tell them not to drive with one hand, but you are doing it. Okay, so make sure you get rid of that. That's a bad habit. Number five, cutting corners, especially when you're going right. When you're going right from the major road into a minor road, you are going right and you are cutting corners. You are not going to your side of the road. Make sure you look early, look where the corner is and don't cut the corners. Because cutting corners meaning you are not going to your side of the road. You are cutting corner to the other side before you reach your side. And if there's a car coming, that's a problem. So number five is cutting corners when you are going right or when you're turning right. If you have that problem, get rid of that problem, practice on that, make sure you don't do it. That's why you're going to be teaching your learners, that's what you should be doing. So no cutting corners when you're turning right. Number six, roundabouts. Make sure you fully understand what is roundabout, which lane you need, when to signal, how much speed, when should you be looking, when should you be braking. On a mini roundabout, should you signal as you are leaving the roundabout? So make sure you understand fully the roundabouts. Many, many, they forget the roundabouts, the signaling, the lane. Because they've been driving for a while, they just forgot how to do the roundabouts. They're just doing it anyhow when they go to the roundabouts. So make sure you read about it, watch videos about roundabouts, and you fully understand what is roundabouts, which lane you need to go to the exits that you want to go, when to signal, mini roundabouts signaling do you understand all of that okay i put that on the list because like i said when i give lessons when i give assessment lessons to others who wants to become driving instructors i do see the problems on roundabouts when they are dealing with roundabouts and this is why i put that on the list so go through roundabouts understand roundabouts and get rid of the bad habits if you have it number seven is meeting traffic what is meeting traffic do you understand meeting traffic? Who has the priority on meeting traffic? Driving along, parked cars on both sides, there's no space for two cars. Who has priority? Who's going to give way? Do you have the priority or do they have the priority? Do you understand priorities? Do you understand meeting traffic? So check on the videos on meeting traffic on my the other channel and watch the videos on meeting traffic. Understand the subject. Understand the priorities understand how to deal with the subject meeting traffic okay because many they do have problems they keep pushing when they see when they go to a road where there's no space for two car and there's a car coming they keep pushing the other car to stop because they don't know who's got the priority they don't know how to deal with the situation so make sure you go over make sure you understand the subject and you know how to deal with that you know who has the priority okay so meeting traffic is number seven. Number eight is the speed limits. Do you understand the speed limits? Do you understand the speed of the road? Are you checking your speed when you are driving? Or are you speeding most of the time? Are you driving too slow? Are you driving too fast for the road? Are you checking the speed signs? Are you checking the speed road markings? Do you understand the sign of national speed limit? What does the sign mean? Speed limits on red circle, speed limits on blue circle, do you understand the difference? You as a driving instructor, it is your responsibility to understand, to deal with it so that you could teach your learners. So number eight is speed limits, how to deal with the roads, how to understand the speed, read the road, make sure you know the speed of the road, don't miss any sign of the speed. Okay, so that's number eight. 
Number nine is junctions. Now I put that on the list because like I said, you've been driving for a while, okay? Do you understand junctions? So do you understand the giveaway line, the stop line, open junction, closed junction, crossroads, and also, like I said earlier, roundabouts. These are part of junction. Do you understand all of that? Do you know how to deal with those? Unmarked junctions where there's no road markings. How do you deal with them? Even though I'm not explaining fully, I'm just giving you the subjects in this video so that you know where you should be looking, which subjects you should be looking into. Because these are the problems you're gonna face when you are dealing with, when you go to your ADA part two. And it's not just about part two, it's about part three. After your part three, where are you gonna be? You're gonna become a driving instructor. And these are the things you're gonna be teaching your learners. Do you understand them? So read about junctions, understand junctions, the types of junctions, the different types of road markings, the stop line, the giveaway line, the stop sign, the giveaway sign, open junction, closed junction. So the road markings on junctions, the giveaway line, which is double broken white line, is it the same when you go to roundabouts? Is it double broken or is it just single? Is there a difference between normal roundabout and a mini roundabout? What about the road markings? Is it the same? The stop sign and the giveaway sign, is it the same? If not, why not? What's the difference? Who has the priority on crossroads? Do you know how to deal with crossroads? Do you understand crossroads? I want you to look into those subjects and understand junctions fully so that you know fully how to deal with it and you will know how to pass the message on. You will know how to teach your learners when you become a driving instructor, okay? And this is the reason why I put that on the list so that you know you look into it and you become master at it. You become a specialist on the subject. As a driving instructor, what is your job? To become a specialist on the subjects. Number 10, reversing. When you're reversing, which way should you be looking? Many, because they've been driving for a long time, they're not looking at the back over their shoulder. They're just looking at the mirror and the side mirrors. They're not looking over their shoulder. Because when the car is going back, when you're reversing, where where should you be looking? Which way should you be looking mainly? You should be looking at the back mainly. That's the way the car is going. Or should you be just looking at the mirror and the side mirrors? Many, like I said, because you've been driving for a while, you're not looking at the back anymore. And if you are, then you are on the minority. Majority, they don't look at the back when they are reversing. Because they've been driving for a while, they just look at the top mirror, side mirrors, and they're reversing. When you should be looking actually over your shoulder at the back when you're reversing okay so that's number 10 make sure when you're reversing practice to reverse looking at the back when you're reversing you could get help you should be looking at the top and side mirrors also the reverse camera that you have on your dashboard these are all okay to look but mainly you should be looking at the back okay and number 11 is your mobile okay i'm going to put that on the list so that you know because it is dangerous and it is something you need to get used to. You've been driving for a while and maybe you don't have that problem. I'm sure you don't because it's illegal. You shouldn't be touching your mobile when you are driving. I'm sure you don't have the problem, but just to remind you, make sure you get a habit of driving without using the mobile. Put it on your closet and it's just there. You don't use it, you don't even touch it. So normal driving, you shouldn't be using the mobile phone. I know you're not using it because it's illegal, right? But I just want to put down the list so that you remember, you remind yourself so that you could remind your learners after they pass, they shouldn't be using their mobile. It is dangerous. It's your life at risk and you're risking others. So if you need your TikTok, Instagram and Facebook and all the rest, you could do that when you stop somewhere safe on the left or when you go home. Don't touch the phone. Don't check your TikTok or whatever the social media that you have. Don't risk your life by checking them. Unless you stop somewhere safe on the left, you secure the car, engine off, and then check. So like I said, these are the problems you're going to face. These are the problems you will have. If not all, most of them you will have the problems with. Because I have seen, like I said, I've given many assessment lessons before their ADA part two. And these are the problems for most. So go through them, do trainings on them, practice those on your own time. Just go over each one at a time. 20 minutes, half an hour, one hour on each one and correct them, practice them and make them better so that you go to your idea part two 
a new pass i hope the video helps if it does please do give a thumbs up please do make a comment or the thing of the video and if you're new to the channel don't forget to subscribe so don't miss any of my future videos hope to see you again on the next video bye for now